Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Richard's Episcopal Church here in Winter Park, Florida on this Independence Day. We had a request uh, this year from Ralph Zaorski, who's one of our good parishioners. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Ralph. He's uh, watching us, no doubt, on YouTube. Uh, from Davenport, and he said, since Independence Day falls on a Sunday, how about we 
use the readings signed for Independence Day for July 4th. So we said yes. So instead of proper nine in uh, the revised common lectionary, we're using the lessons appointed for Independence Day uh, today. And if you recognize the prelude, that is the Navy hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. So a shout out to um, our uh, armed forces as well in that, that we sang two weeks ago when Jesus was asleep in the boat. If you remember, Jesus was asleep in the boat. We sung the Navy hymn that Sunday. But let's sing our national anthem, please, as uh, we, is actually a hymn uh, in our hymnal. Please stand for our opening hymn, O Say Can You See by the Dawn's Early Light. Stripes and bright stars our service at the bottom of page one. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity, and blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now...
With you. Let us pray. The Collect for Proper Nine. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And for Independence Day, Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. from Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them with food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Sweet. 
A reading from Hebrews. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs of him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him descent faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. God. Our sequence hymn is found on page six of your service bulletin, God of our fathers, whose mighty hand. Please stand. Oh.
Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of Christ. Be seated. <clears throat> be perfect, Jesus says. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. I love that line from Matthew's gospel. We are called, we are called to a life of perfection. And in our gospel for this Independence Day, Jesus tells us one way to do that. Love your neighbors and love your enemies. Love your neighbors, love those who love you, and love those who wish to do, your, do you harm. Love them. Remember, they are children of the Most High God, as you are a child of God. We must love all people. We must respect their dignity, as it says in our baptismal covenant. What we must hate is hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. Love your enemies. Thomas Jefferson left that verse, love your enemies, from Matthew 5 in his, boss, in his Bible. Y'all know about the Jefferson Bible? Thomas Jefferson and many of the founding fathers were really deists more than anything else. They believed that God existed, but the rest of the stuff, uh, not so much. So Thomas Jefferson took his scissors out and excised the verses from his Bible that he uh, didn't care much for. And now we have what is known as the Jefferson Bible. In fact, I think it's on display uh, somewhere. You can check that online to see if, where you can see the Jefferson Bible. It's, it's readily available as well. So he left in the verse, love your enemies. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. That verse in the Jefferson Bible, made it, along with most of Jesus' miracles, into Thomas Jefferson's fireplace. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect is not in there. And no wonder, no wonder. Consider some of these little-known facts about the American Revolution. Not a whole lot was perfect at the time of the American Revolution, and I think many of you agree, we have got a long way to go still in the United States of America to get to perfection in any way, shape, or form. America typically celebrates the 4th of July as a unifying victory for the country. 
But the road to independence was more divisive and violent than most people realize. And this is according to an author, a professor author named Thomas Slaughter, who is the Arthur Arthur R. Miller Professor of History at the University of Rochester. He wrote a book published in 2014 called Independence, The Tangled Roots of the American Revolution. And here are three little known facts. These these kind of blew my mind. Many many of you may know these facts, but these blew my mind. Uh, Little known facts about the American Revolution. Number one, at no time did more than 45%, not half, 45% of colonists support the war. Less than half of the colonists supported the war. And at least a third of colonists even fought for the British. Did you know that? Unlike the Civil War, which pitted region against region, the War of Independence literally pitted neighbor against neighbor. Americans were not only rebelling against the mother country, they were fighting each other. Of course, they weren't Americans then, but they, weren't, they were you know, fighting the mother country, but they were fighting each other here. Fact number two. A higher percentage of the population died in the American Revolution than in any other war fought by Americans. Did you know that? A higher percentage of the population. As a result, more people who lived through the American Revolution knew someone who died than in any other war fought since. They put the casualty number at about 6,800, which I was like, 6,800, big deal. That's not a lot of people. And then I thought to myself, did I just consider 6,800 people dead, not a big deal? What am I thinking? You know, I think we've just come through a pandemic of some sort. 6,800 people. But again, remember, it was a high percentage of the population. Experts also estimate that 17,000 people died as a result of disease, wounds, and other effects of the Revolutionary War. Fact number three is my favorite one. Many Americans switched allegiance and changed signs during the Revolution, depending on which side was winning. Loved that. And here's a great example. At one inn along a well-traveled road in New Jersey, which is today um, Route 1, US 1, an innkeeper would send a servant out to look down the road every morning and throughout the day. Not just in the morning, throughout the day. If an army was spotted coming towards the inn, the servant was charged with identifying the colors, which army is it, and raising the corresponding flag so that the soldiers wouldn't burn down the inn, right? Good businessman, right? Our first allegiance, not as to one side or the other, just to our business, right? That's very American of him. The Revolutionary War lasted just over seven years. That's a long time, seven years. And it finally came to an end. This is, again, a good bit of trivia that I hope you know. In September of 1783, with the signing of the Treaty of Paris. Not a whole lot was perfect about the American Revolution. All you have to do is listen to the soundtrack of the musical Hamilton, and you should if you haven't at this point, and you will understand that even those who seemed most focused on the vision of a new land, a homeland, a better country, as we hear from Hebrews today, only exists in heaven. All of those founding fathers very often were at odds with each other much of the time. It is a miracle that we are what we are today. So perfection. Is perfection... Perfection, which we generally hear to mean a life free of error, a life free of sin. If we are to be perfect like God, as Jesus says in Matthew, is that what Jesus is really getting at in the Sermon on the Mount? Be free of error, free of sin? Probably not, as you might have guessed. The word in Greek in Matthew's gospel is teleos. Teleos is an adjective derived from the Greek word for telos, meaning end. It can also mean purpose. It can also mean goal. It 
can also, also mean fulfillment. It's okay, I've only got three left. Can also mean realization, fully grown, or complete. Complete. I like that one. And only in this sense does it mean perfect, as in lacking nothing. Not free from error or sin, but lacking nothing. What Jesus is describing in Matthew's gospel when he says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, is not moral perfection, but instead completeness, living as a whole person, living a life of greater integrity. That's what we're talking about. Living a life of greater integrity, living perfect. This Independence Day, let us strive for that kind of perfection, perfect wholeness, perfect completeness, growing in integrity, knowing that we are loved completely, perfectly by our creator God, and we are called to love others completely, perfectly as well. When we look to the telos, the full life that God wants, not just for the United States of America, God bless the USA, but the perfect full life that God wants for the whole world. When we can look to that end, then we can work for justice, freedom, and peace with renewed energy and with love for all. What can you do to live more perfectly today, to live more wholly today, more completely today? How might your heart change when you look at the telos, the end goal for God's world? In our collect for Independence Day, we prayed that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. Maintain. That's a good start. But really, if you're just maintaining, then you're not living completely. You're not living holy. If you just want to maintain what you have, then you're missing the goal, the telos, the completeness, the perfection. Let's look beyond maintenance and let's look to that perfect, whole, complete fulfillment that will be to share our liberties with all people and not rest until that perfect end is realized. Amen. And now let us stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 7 of your service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are next, found on page 8 of your service bulletin. Please kneel or stand as you wish. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For our families, for our people in their daily work and life. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. 
for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. Now pick up the president one. <laughs> Go back one. You skipped the prayer. Oh. You can't do that. No. One. Sorry about that. Independent. For our president and the governor, this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For those, all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, for kindness and need. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Allison, Bob, Tom, Harry, and Dale, and Rich, our clergy, and all the bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and serve for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for John T., Linda, Pat, Joyce, Bob C., Molly, Steve, Kate, Mary, Rudy and the Cooper family, Maria, John, Stephanie, Larry, Val, Meredith, Hazel, Stan, and Jenny. <clears throat> And for family and friends, Bitta, Carol, Linda, Carissa, Jason, Drew, Angel, Morgan, Sandy, Sarah, Rachel, and Emma, Donna, Leanna, Sue, Lauren, Rick, Will and Jess, and Janice. And we pray especially for our Jim, our aspirant to the priesthood, Cheryl, our aspirant to the diaconate, teachers, first responders, our military personnel, healthcare workers, and others whom we name. Hear us, Lord, your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You can. St. Richard's Episcopal Church. We are a church on a mission. We are here to discover God's grace, change our lives, and change the whole world. And we do that in very many ways. This week, we do that by feeding people at the Coalition for the Homeless. Bella is here, and she will be passing out pans 
for and recipes for the salad. We're on salad this month at St. Richard's. Uh, we're passing out more pans than usual because apparently we're not doing enough. We're, St. Richard's have been missing the mark. We're not making enough, enough food. So we're going to send a lot of salad to the coalition <laughs> this coming Friday. So we need um, people to make salad and deliver it to the kitchen by 4 p.m. on Friday the 9th. And we need people to volunteer. Bella will also be taking your names if you want to meet here at St. Richard's um, at 4 o'clock to beat a path down there. We're also showing up late, so I know, it's a problem. We're, we're the problem child in terms of this ministry, which is cracking me up. But anyway, so get here right at four o'clock so we can zoom down to the Coalition for the Homeless, or you can meet us there. Debbie Sponsler will be on site to meet you directly at the Coalition if that works for you. We've been running an, uh, an announcement about the prayer tree, which is getting installed at St. Richard's. We're going to wait until the tropical, tropicalness, so because it requires some um, stuff that sits outside for a long time. So we're going to wait one more week. Sue Brown is heading up that ministry. I also wanted to, um, Cheryl, our aspirant to the diaconate, who knows who Cheryl is? Okay, good. Half of you don't. That's her. <laughs> So we've been praying for Cheryl, our aspirant to the diaconate, and Jim, our aspirant to the priesthood, for months now. And Cheryl said, you know what, Allison, I don't think everybody knows who I am or what that means. I said, I think you're right, Cheryl. So um, we're remedying that situation. Cheryl's going to write a little bio of herself. But we are lucky enough at St. Richard's to be able to send all people through a discernment process through the Diocese of Kentucky. I'm trying to look at the camera, Brian. I'm trying not to turn too much to, to Cheryl. Uh, and so Cheryl is going through that process uh, for the diaconate, and Jim Kristoff, who knows who Jim is? Okay, he's one of our preachers, his picture's in the bulletin. He's one of our resident theologians, Bible scholars, who's having office hours in the theological library from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. every Tuesday, so drop in and ask Jim your hard questions. I'll take your easy ones, Jim will take your hard ones. Uh, <laughs> Jim, Jim is our aspirant to the priesthood, so those two processes are going on, and Cheryl's going to write something about herself, and we'll have a little, and talk to her after the service about why she wants to do this, but leave yourself enough time to talk to Cheryl <laughs> about why she wants to be a deacon in the Episcopal Church. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I want to thank very much, I did in the E! News, Ryan Hudnell and his mom, Lisa, who have been working Really, I mean, eight-hour days here at St. Richard's to get the Theological Library organized and cleaned. They've also um, organized and cleaned the Flower Guild room and unearthed a bunch of St. Margaret's Guild, like, ancient documents, which is fascinating. I'll talk to you, Bev, about that afterwards if you want them. Uh, and they also uh, said, hey, we don't have red, white, and blue flowers. They were purple for a funeral we had on Thursday. So, like, we're going to do red, white, and blue, so on Friday... Ryan and Lisa created the beautiful um, patriotic display that you see behind you. So um, I'm grateful for that. We have a special presentation to make today to Gail Hankin. Come on up, Gail. Gail Hankin, for how many years, Gail, were you the uh, lead for pastoral care here at St. Richard's? 14 years. Before I got here 10 years ago, Gail was the chair of the Pastoral Care Commission. And um, she has retired this year uh, from the organization of that whole thing. She's keeping uh, the pastoral care. So just as Jim has office hours uh, from 9 to 12 in the Theological Library, Gail is here almost every Wednesday, without fail, with very few exceptions, for um, counseling in the pastoral care counseling office, which is the, the library space, which was the library space in our parish hall. Um, every Wednesday from 11 to 3, you can make an appointment to see her. She's a licensed mental health counselor. So we wanted to thank you for your 14 years of leadership. And Sayaka Kamakari is one of our uh, resident iconographers here at St. Richard's. And she created this beautiful icon. I guess I'm going to give it to you and you can hold it so people can see it. And then you can take it with you. Or you can leave her up there. You can. The icon is of uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary as holy, but she, the title of the icon is Holy Protection, which is uh, Sayaka chose 
that icon to write for you, Gail, in honor of your years of service. Uh, this is no easy feat. This is hundred plus hours of work on uh, this icon for Sayaka, which is why it, we went, didn't present it to you last month because it wasn't done yet. So here it is now. <laughs> we had to wait. You had to retire. We had to, you know, say please do this, and now, now it's complete. So there's a special prayer for um, the blessing of the icon and over the person who will use it to pray. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to pray that now. Creating God, you fashioned the universe in love and brought us forth from the earth. Throughout the ages, our ancestors longed to see your face. And when the time had grown full, you sent your Christ among us so that we might find our way back to you, our source and our destiny. Look upon your servants here and upon this icon created in love and prayer. Fill them with the radiance of your good, holy, and life-giving spirit to complete the work of our hands for your glory and for the good of those, especially Gail, who will come to pray before this icon. May this icon be a source of blessing and hope for your people. May it give comfort and challenge complacency, and may it proclaim your infinite love for us in every situation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This icon is blessed and sanctified in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Gail. There's your holy protection in thanksgiving of your work here at St. We'll leave her protecting us for the duration of the service. Who's having a birthday? Really? <laughs> Faith, do you want to come up or you want to stay over there? Can you climb over Tom Irish? <laughs> I know. Don't trip over Tom Irish. Climb over him. Faith Butler's birthday is tomorrow, the 5th of July. 1931. Don't make me do math, Faith. Tell me how old you are tomorrow. 90 years old. 90! We were laughing as uh, Libby was reading from Hebrews about Abraham, who was as good as dead. Are you as good as dead at 90? She's better than dead at 90. I would say so. Faith, look at the camera so people can see you. Yes. I'm going to read the rest of the names of people who are having birthdays this week. Joan Smith, July 6th. Bob McClure, July 7th. Sue Summers, July 9th. Grace Marino, July 9th. Avery Rose Miller, one of the grandchildren of Connie Miller that's uh, lemming today, July 9th. Harry Smith, the 10th. And then Blythe is the 11th, but she can wait till next Sunday. Faith, there's two prayers on page 830 of the Book of Common Prayer for birthdays. Which one do you like? Oh, God, our times are in your hands. Or watch over your child. Watch over your child. She looks great, right? I just love how old people at St. Richard's are. You're not old at all. Prayer number 51, let's pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy 90th birthday, Faith Butler. I love you so much. I'm going to walk you up. I know. That makes me love you. This is, is a special, special truth. It's very special. There's nothing else. It's the truth. I haven't found anything else like it. No, even where you were was not like finger. No, nothing. I, I know. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for her so she yes gets close to something to hold on to. Not that she always needs it. We do have um, anniversaries come up, Sue Youngstead. 
come up here. And Nazarene and Don Duncan, I really hope you're watching, and I'm hoping you're going to come back to church, because it's time for you to come back. We're going to bless your anniversary remotely. And you too, Larry. I hope you're watching. Is he watching? Do you need to call him? Okay, come closer to me, please. Sue and Larry Youngstead were married how many years ago? Um, <laughs> 35 years ago on the 5th tomorrow, July 5th. And Donna and Nazarene Duncan were married, I think, probably longer than that on July 4th, which is exciting. So with all of our remote people, I'm going to pray a blessing over you and Larry and over you, Nazarene and Don. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we praise you for the tender mercy and unfailing care revealed to us in Jesus the Christ and for the great joy and comfort bestowed upon us in the gift of human love. We give you thanks for Nazarene and Don and for Larry and Sue Youngstead and the covenant of faithfulness they have made. Pour out the abundance of your Holy Spirit upon them. Keep them in your steadfast love. Protect them from all danger. Fill them with your wisdom and peace. Lead them in holy service to each other and to the world. Amen. A special note about uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing, which was the Gloria, the hymn of praise that we sang today. Uh, the Episcopal Church has just, this is kind of a convoluted process, but the, it's a good process. The Episcopal Church has just voted to um, have the Office of Government Relations of the Episcopal Church uh, petition the U United States government to make Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is also known uh, as the Black National Anthem, to be one of the national one of the national hymns, national the national hymn. We have a national anthem, but they are now the Episcopal Church will uh, petition the government to make this a national hymn. So that's good work. Uh, Dr. Maltzby is feeling good about that. Do you want to say anything more, Carl? That I'll relay. Uh, the petition that we will make available to St. Richard for you to sign to send in to support the, the uh, bill that's going, H.R. 301 is going before Congress to make a, this every voice and sing, a national hymn. We do not have a national hymn. That's right. So this would be a, a big deal one. And um, we did, Pam Menke and her Summoning the Divine series did um, a, a piece on James W. Johnson, James Wendell Johnson, uh, through her series, a very interesting uh, uh, person in our, in our national history. So that's, that's exciting news. Thank you for that, Carl. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We have a change in our offertory anthem. It, Susan O'Connell will sing Hear Loud Land by Tom Brooks and Robin Brooks.
continue our service on page 10 of your service bulletin with Eucharistic Prayer B. Our service, our right to service, is using the expansive language version of right to uh, of the right to Eucharistic prayers and um, the liturgy of the word. You might have gotten tripped up a little bit. I keep here. I love hearing you get tripped up at the Nicene Creed, which is uh, changed just slightly. And I should be given prizes out, except to you, Stephen, at the door. If you could tell me what changed in the uh, in the Nicene Creed, a couple of places, but one very significant one. So you might hear some different words uh, being used through the through the Eucharistic prayer as well. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. kneel as you wish. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ Oh, excuse me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Richard and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
our post-communion prayer is found on page 13 of your service bulletin. Standing or kneeling as you wish, let us pray and give thanks together. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Oh, Beautiful for Spacious Skies. you got to sing it. Page 14. Thank you.